Good evening. I think I've got my IT sorted. Um, so welcome to um, Care Fertility Live. Um, I'm Charles Kingsland. I'm the group director at uh, Care Fertility and I'm calling in tonight from Liverpool. So uh, and it's really freezing. It's freezing cold. Um, so I'm just tonight we're going to we take going to take um, as many as many questions as possible. Excuse me a minute. I'll just go and get my questions. Um, I'll get my my questions in a minute. Um, we're going to base um, this evening's chat on male fertility. Thank you. Here's my um, my PA with all the with all the questions. So um, let me just see the ones that have that have come in so far. Um, so I'm going to give you a little background about what I um, understand by uh, male fertility. We'll talk a bit about sperm counts, um, how to make sperm better, um, the issues with male factor infertility, the treatments, and then we'll try and um, answer a few questions. Now, some I always start when I talk about physiology and how things happen by going back to basics. So, one of the things that I always say is the difference between boys and girls is that is that boys are sperm factories. So we've got all the ingredients in our bodies to make sperm every single day of the week. Some days we're good at it. Some days we're bad at it. Um, but we have the ability to make sperm up until the day we die. It takes us about six weeks to make a sperm. We then store them, ejaculate them and make some more. Um, as we get older, sperm gets older with us and it gets a little bit um, dodgier. But um, if you um, but theoretically, we can reproduce right up until we are into our dotage. And in fact, Charlie Chaplin, um, the famous comedian, silent movie star, he had his last child. He conceived his last child when he was 85 years old. I don't know how he managed it, but anyway, that was, that's that. Um, we tend to lose our fertility as we get older, us males, by just losing interest in putting sperm where it needs to go. You know, sky sports, beer, mates, golf, and all that sort of thing. But, and, and we don't have intercourse as regularly as when we're younger, but we still make sperm. Girls, on the other hand, are egg, warehouses all their eggs are in their ovaries on the day you're born and actually you have the maximum number of eggs by the 20th week of intrauterine life so when you're 20 weeks old in your mother's womb womb that's when your ovaries contain the maximum amount of eggs and by the when you're born actually you've lost about half the number of your eggs and unlike men you cannot make eggs you can't make them better. They're just like um, um, meat pies on a shelf. They're, they're, the ingredients are already in there. You can't sort of lift the lid off of the meat pie and put extra steak and kidney in it or what have you. You can only, um, you can only preserve the quality. And as eggs get older, as you get older, eggs will get older with you. And that's why, unlike males, girls' um, fertility declines much more rapidly and it declines as you get o older quite quickly quickly over the age of 35 rapidly over the age of 38 then it drops quite substantially once you reach the age of 40 that doesn't mean to say that you can't get pregnant over the age of 40 far from it but it's less but it's less likely so the key is to preserve your egg quality. And there are certain things that, that can, um, can be detrimental to your egg quality in the same way as it can be detrimental to your sperm quality. Now, there are certain things that we know about sperm. And interestingly, in 1930, the professor of obstetrics and gynaecology in Liverpool, Professor Gemmell, did a, did a study on looking at the the, the average sperm count in males in Liverpool. 
And by coincidence, he used the same measurement parameters that were adopted by the WHO, the World Health Organization in the 1970s to assess sperm. So we were able to do a direct comparison with sperm quality in the 1930s compared with sperm quality in the 1970s. And the average sperm count in a human male during that time in the northwest of England dropped by 50%. Now, that doesn't mean to say that the fertility dropped by 20%, the ability of that sperm to make um, a child, make a baby, but the count dropped by 50% and the motility dropped by 50%. So there are um, lots of theories as to why this has happened. Um, the, 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 there are a lot of key factors that, that point towards diet. And in diet, we eat a lot, a lot more processed foods. And one of the chemicals that gets into our food um, a lot is estrogen. Now, estrogen is a very strong um, steroid hormone. And it's, you know, the predominant sex hormone in females. But a lot of the breakdown products of food break down to estrogen-like substances. And if these get into the water get into your water or um, into the food chain, then that may have an effect on lowering your sperm count. And I've heard um, a story told that um, the average glass of water drunk in London has been through another human 10 times before it gets to you. And one of the most resistant breakdown compounds known to man is um, estrogen. So estrogen gets into the water and it, that may be the case. Um, don't stop drinking water though if you live in London because water is overwhelmingly good for you for a lot, lot of other reasons and it doesn't mean to say that you can drink bottled water and that's any better tap water is the best sort of water there are other things that are implicated and one of the other things that are, is implicated is um, lifestyle we have a far more sedentary lifestyle than we did 50 years ago and there was another study that was performed about 30 or 40 years ago, that looked at different professions and their sperm counts. And generally speaking, it was found that people with a more um, active lifestyle had better sperm counts. So if you were a postman out in the open, uh, lots of walking around, you tended to have a better sperm count than if you were a taxi driver or a bus driver. And one of the major reasons for that is that unlike eggs, eggs like to be kept warm. That's why ovaries are in your body. Sperm are best produced in the cold. And that's why sperm, that's why testicles are outside the body. And it's important for testicular health that you keep your testicles cool. So if you're wanting to optimise your sperm count, keep your testicles cool. OK, and um, um, that might mean having cooler baths, uh, wearing boxer shorts, avoiding tight underwear. Similarly, you know, let your testicles dangle around a bit. And um, so, um, you know, keep your testicles cool as often as you possibly can if you want to optimise um, your sperm count there are when couples come to see me having difficulty achieving a pregnancy we normally define infertility as inability to conceive after about 18 months of trying now that can vary depending on your age your level of anxiety etc but generally speaking if i took 100 couples off the street and said Right, I want you to go away and get pregnant. Um, you can have intercourse as many times as you want. About 70 couples would come back after one year having had a baby or been pregnant. After two years, it gets to about 75%, but then it levels off. So after three years, four years, the chance of you getting pregnant actually goes down. So that's when we normally say 18 months um, is the best time 
to visit your doctor, go to see your GP if you're trying for a baby and you're having difficulty. Now, um, one of the other things which I always find interesting, uh, uh, an interesting statistic is that we always talk a lot about um, sexual intercourse um, and the importance of having sex. And we talk about it far more than we actually do it. Believe it or not, the average 35 year old couple having sex in this country usually have sex probably about once a month to once every six weeks. It's not as often as um, as um, you would think. So it's important if you're trying to have um, um, a baby that you have enough sex around about the middle of your cycle, round about ovulation. So there are certain things that we have to bear in mind when a couple come to see us for the first time having had 18 months or a year of difficulty conceiving. From a male perspective, and we want to concentrate on the, on the male um, tonight, um, there are certain things in a male's history that may point to um, a sperm problem. Number one, anything in your past history so there are certain um, illnesses or conditions that can create a, a low sperm count. Having undescended testicles as a child that are not fixed. Um, usually, if you do have under undescended testicles, it's very beneficial if these are fixed before the age of four. After the age of four, if you have undescended testicles and they, they haven't been um, fixed in the scrotum, then um, that can have a detrimental effect on sperm production later on in life. Things that will heat up um, sperm can cause problems like um, varicoceles. These are, varicoceles is a varicose vein in your testicle. You can actually feel them sometimes. They're, they're like lumpy uh, bags of worms. And of course, they're full, full of blood, as are any varicose vein. And that blood is hot. And that will heat um, your testicle up and lower the sperm count. Things like infections and the classical infection that can lower your sperm count as a, a teenager is having mumps. Mumps as a baby, that's fine, or as a small child. But if you have mumps later on in life or in, in, um, in your teenage years, then that can point to, um, to a low sperm count. Other things... Any operations um, or um, anything that might have, have affected a testicular performance, um, hernias, bilateral hernias, the, the, you know, uh, lumps that you've had fixed as a child, um, they can they can actually um, cause blockage or lowering your sperm count. So things like that in your history might point to a, a sperm problem. There are other things you can do that can lower your sperm count. Smoking can lower your sperm count. And I, I always say, we always know, we, we know people who smoke and have got lots of babies, but they may have started off with a, with a larger sperm count. There is no doubt that smoking lowers your sperm count. It can cause stress of the sperm, oxidative stress. Now, oxidative stress is a very common, uh, trendy buzzword and, and oxidative stress is an imbalance between two sorts of chemicals in your body. Free radicals, which are, are chemicals that carry around the wrong number of electrons. And they can whiz round your body and whiz round your testicles and cause damage to your sperm. There are other chemicals called antioxidants, which also have extra electrons, which can... Um, which can um, fix free radicals and alter the, the ratio and improve sperm count. But if you want to increase your, your, your nasty free radicals and stress your sperm, smoke. Alcohol, lots of alcohol can lower your sperm uh, count. Eating the wrong sorts of food, rubbish food is, um, um, you know, processed food, that can lower your sperm count. Um, um, what else can, can do it? Um, they're, they're the main ones. Oh, the classic, the one that we see, t um, so often these days, 
Um, going to the gym. Um, steroid hormones to enhance your performance. They are maybe great for your muscles, great for your body, great for your testosterone, but rubbish for your sperm. And often testosterone-like substances get into protein drinks. And males can be too too um uh fit particularly if you if you take performance enhancing type drugs and testosterone is good for delivering sperm it's good for your macho image it's good for your muscles it's good for your body but it's not good for your testicles so um cut out um if you want to have babies and you can't have babies cut out your um um anabolic steroids, cut out your protein tr drinks. They are um, not good for you. Now, when I started fertility 30 years ago, we always used to, or, or society used to think of fertility or fertility problems as a disorder of females. And the majority of, of, of infertile women used to come to their clinic on their own. They'd, they'd come along on their own. Husband and women would would tend to make excuses for their for their husband or their partner or their um and they'd say um oh he's busy at work I don't want to bother him with it well let me tell you fifty percent of all problems with fertility lie with the male and fortunately um, nowadays it's it's rare for a female to come on her own to the clinic so we have to recognise that fertility problems are a disorder of couples and um, I think we tend to underestimate the um, the stress obviously infertility is a very very stressful um, stressful condition it does your head in um, you know if the st stress of the condition doesn't doesn't stress you the stress of the treatment does <clears throat> and it's we we tend to underplay the um, the stress that that men feel because we're we're you know we're supposed to support um, our um, um, f our female partners <clears throat> and so we bear the the the, the brunt with stoicism with stoicism we're expected to well in fact we know that you know males suffer stress um, just as much. As females can, so we have to recognise that. And at Care Fertility, we we put a, a great emphasis on the the care of the male and the stress of the male. Um, it's a bit like um, when we do the main test in males. Once we've taken a history and we've um, we've point we we've we've got an indicator as to what if there might be a problem with the male. The next test we have to do is a semen analysis. Now. <clears throat> It's one thing saying, oh, can you produce a sperm sample? But it's another thing actually producing it. And it's, it's you know, it's not the nicest thing you have to do, particularly if you have to do it in hospital. And, um, you know, fortunately nowadays, designated fertility clinics have designated spaces for the for the male to produce his sam sample, in um, w which is discreet, which is comfortable, which is soundproofed, and which is which try and minimizes the the stress that you that you um, are already under to produce a sample sometimes you, you if you live close to the um, clinic you can produce a sample at home and bring it in but it has to get into the um, clinic within um, an hour of production otherwise it will die off and you don't you try not to keep it um, too warm I remember once and this is absolutely true <clears throat> um, a man brought his sperm count into our, our clinic and um he put it on the in in the laboratory <clears throat> and it was in silver foil and the andrologist opened the the packet and in the packet there was a steaming hot potato and it had been cut into halves and in the middle was a pot with the sperm in it <clears throat> and the andrologist said oh this is what, what, what have you brought it in in a in, a, in this for and uh, the man said, well, I've done what it said on the instructions. He said, I said what, was it? what did it say on the instructions? And the chap said, he said, produce sample, bring to hospital in jacket, oh, jacket pocket. I thought he said jacket potato. So, 
if you keep the hot, um, that's true. And if you keep the um, the um, <clears throat> if you warm the the sperm up too much, it's it's it won't be good. So when we do the the sperm test, we look for three things: for count, for morphology, i.e., what the sperm looks like, and for motility, whether the sperm is moving or not. And by rule of thumb, um, I don't want you to remember these numbers, but the number 20 is is the one to remember. <clears throat> so the average male, we all have different um, sperm counts. The average male should have a count of sperm around 20 million per mil. OK, 20 million. About 20 percent of those sperm should be doing front crawl. Bearing in mind that for a sperm to swim from a vagina to the egg is the equivalent of a man swimming from Liverpool to New York at 600 miles an hour. That's the journey. It's a long journey. So the sperm must be doing front crawl. It's no good doing doggy paddle towards Runcorn or backstroke towards Birkenhead. You've got to be doing front crawl or a substantial number of them have got to be doing front crawl towards the new Brighton Lighthouse. And then surprisingly, only 4% of those sperm should look normal. We produce huge numbers of abnormal sperm, and that is normal. But we, we want to, it's, we want to expect at least 4% to be normal. So 20 million per mil, 20% doing front crawl, 4% being normal. So they those are th those are the counts that we 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 look for. So is there anything that we can do to improve our sperm? Yes, there is. <clears throat> Reduce oxidative stress. Stop smoking, drinking. Um, don't stop drinking completely, but reduce your, your drinking. Keep your testicles cool. Don't change your job to be a postman. That's not important, but keep your testicles cool. Don't have lots of, you know, I've seen a, a a couple just recently where the male had a, was, um they've been trying for a couple, for a baby for two years. The male um, was a bricklayer on a building site and every night he came home and had a steaming hot bath. Um, and um, his sperm count was dropped, was negligible when we che checked it. And all we had to do was to say, don't have hot baths. Instead of coming home and relaxing in a steaming hot bath, have a shower instead. And um, his sperm came, came, came back up. So it might be, you know, something that's really, really simple uh, as that. Um, vitamins and um, minerals um, are good. Um, things like vitamin E, zinc. Um, but the best thing to do is keep um, um, your um, testicles as healthy as possible. Now, I could go on for ages about keeping your testicle, testicular health, but I'm going to answer um, one or two um, questions that have come through, and there's hundreds, and we'll, we'll try and get through them. Um, if you don't, if I don't answer them now, um, you can always phone in uh, um, or email us, and we'll get back to you. My husband is a keen cyclist and does about six hours per week. Could this affect his sperm? Yes, it could. As from what I've said. Six, uh, six hours a week uh, on a on a bike that's pretty fit but also just imagine what your testicles are doing when you're when you're um cycling they're being squashed on the on the cycle seat now it doesn't necessarily mean that your sperm count is going to be um lowered but it's not going to help them it's better to you know instead of doing six hours do two hours and then in, in the other four hours go for a walk with box well, wear something else but apart from boxer shorts, but, you know, keep your testicles cool. OK. My partner has had a vasectomy. How will this affect his sperm? If there are any impacts, low sperm count, what can be done? Well, unfortunately, when you've had a vasectomy at that particular point in your life, you have gone to a doctor and said, I do not want to father any more children. And that's what's happened. They've cut the vas that is the pipeline from the testicle to the outside world. So although the sperm are still being produced, the the um, the pipe has that lets the sperm out 
has been closed. So the semen still comes out because that's coming out a bit further down the pipe, but it won't have any sperm in it. What can you do about it? Well, there are two things. You can have a reversal of vasectomy. Very difficult to do well. Pick your doctor very carefully. Can hurt a lot. Um, but you need to get the correct advice. The alternative is instead of reconstituting and putting the pipe back together, take the sperm directly out of the testicle. Now, you will never get the a good amount of sperm out of the testicle um, as you would have done when you were ejaculating normally. But that sperm can be used quite successfully in a laboratory and it has to be injected into the egg of your partner so that means um um you'd need ivf but get advice before you have your reversal of vasectomy because there are a, a lots of things to consider as to whether to go straight for ivf or to go and pay for a reversal of a vasectomy because they're not as successful as you think and it depends on what you've had done how you've had your vasectomy um and how it's been done, because if a lot of pipes been taken away, you won't be able to put it back together. Similarly, if your pipe's been burnt, you can't put that back together. Um, so you just need to, to get the correct advice from the correct person, because there are some really outstanding reverses of vasectomy. But similarly, the, 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 there are some that um, may not be as experienced or as, as, as good. Um, We've just started on our IVF journey, consultation booked, that's good. Um, my partner is worried about the conversation, what the conversation will be like and what happens when he has to produce a sample. How does it all work? Well, what you need to do is to make sure that you've chosen the clinic where you think you are going to be best served. That might be one that's close by, one that's small, one that's big, but make sure that the doctor that's looking after you, you can trust them. They're going to give you information that you need, um, that you can use, that's valuable. And then once you've got the information you need and the information you want, you can make an informed decision as to what treatment you should undertake with the advice of the doctor or the nurse or the fertility person that's that's looking after you. As I said before, it's always a stressful business. Um, you know, if you're not stressed beforehand, you're going to be stressed um, afterwards. And then after being told to produce a sample um, on demand can be, you know, it can be really poleaxing. Um, so you don't have to produce a sample straight away. If you live close by, you can produce a sample at home and bring it in um, or... You can, as I say, most clinics now have m much better facilities for producing sperm than they used to have. You know, I remember in a, one of my local hospitals when I was a, a registrar, the men came into the fertility clinic and had to produce a sample in a toilet at the end of the corridor. And it's just barbaric. So most people, um, most clinics now have got really quite um, quite good sperm producing um, place you know rooms where you can be discreet you can be out of the way um, and um, take your time and if you if if you don't feel like it on that day don't do it you know come back at a time which is which is um, better for you what we need to do is when you produce a sample though is to have not ejaculated for two to five days beforehand so you've built up um, a, a good count because if you ejaculate regularly every day then um you ejaculate low numbers of baby sperm and if you ejaculate every six weeks you ejaculate high numbers of damaged sperm because um once sperm have been once sperm have been um kept in storage for a long time you get um um you can get a build-up of, of free radicals and you know a bit of rubbish in the pipes so you know the pipes need a a good clean out um regularly so two to five days five days is your is your best um is your best sperm count can a low sperm count cause miscarriage yes it can um um we we're we're doing a lot more research on sperm than we used to and it's just too simplistic to say as long as we've got um 
you know, one sperm, we're okay. I, I saw a, um, a couple just recently that had got, um, the, the, the male had, um, had got a, a low sperm count <clears throat> and, um, and um, so the couple had had ICSI. This is where, this is a procedure where the eggs are taken out of the, the female and a single sperm is injected into each egg. And the couple had had um, good fertilization rates. So there'd been plenty of eggs, good fertilization rates of the eggs. So they, they, they'd grown into embryos. But about day three, day four, the embryos started to die and they just didn't develop further on. And the advice they were given was that this might be an egg problem. Well, actually, it's far more likely to be a sperm problem because the sperm plays a very important part in the growth and development of embryos. And so uh, we, you know, we just need to look a bit more closely at the react, um, free radicals, the reactive oxidative um, stress levels of the of the sperm just to have a look a bit more about the morphology because it's too simplistic to say oh we'll just get a sperm and inject it in and it's the end of the story we've got to look a little bit more closely at is the sperm implicated in 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 the miscarriage so the answer to that is yes it can it's less likely but it can and that's something that we bear in mind because as i said to you before fertility is a disorder of couples you need two people to make um um to make a baby and one of them has to be a male now one thing we haven't spoken about tonight is um same sex couples and we can we we need a a, a session uh, or a, a dedicated to um having a family in a, a same sex couple relationship because that too has its trials and stresses and, and tribulations and you and you need specialist advice for that so we actually we're going over we've got loads of questions is there is there a way to improve sperm morphology yes there is keep your testicles cool um do um get a sperm count and sometimes it may be it may be worthwhile asking are there any other sperm count uh, other other sperm parameters that could be measured dna fragmentation um looking at free radicals if there are if there are a high level of of oxidative stress and free radicals in the sperm it may be worthwhile taking a course of antioxidants vitamin e zinc there are uh, um um well man um products proxied is another one which you can take for 6 weeks and then repeat the sample to see whether that's had a beneficial effect on your um sperm count um, there's no point in taking antioxidants if your sperm count is normal and your um, DNA fragmentation index or your oxidative stress levels are normal. It's not going to make it better. So it's only if the um, if if you need treatment. There's no point taking treatment if you don't um, don't have the problem. Very low sperm count, but not none at all. We will be will we be likely to be recommended ICSI yes um you will possibly been recommended to to have ICSI that has in um where there's low sperm counts that can have um that can be the the treatment of choice um but again you need to speak to your doctor or the fertility nurse specialist to see what's the best treatment for you and ICSI of course when it was brought in the early 1990s has revolutionized male um um, sp um sp treatment of male factor infertility because of um because of the abilities that we now have in the um in the laboratory to treat these and i've seen patients where um the male has had not five fifteen million sperm not five million sperm but five sperm um and they've they've gone on to conceive which is great i mean it's it's there's there's a solution for everybody so don't think there's nothing down for us because there always is. There's always something. So just seek advice. We're, you know, we're here to help. Um, right. Final question. Does care, that's that's us, um, care fertility, does care offer treatment for azoospermia? Yeah, of course we do. 
We need to know if you've got azoospermia, that means in your ejaculate, there are no sperm. Well, we need to ask one of two questions. Number one, are you producing sperm and they're just not getting out? I.e., is there a blockage? Or number two, are sperm being produced at all? And a simple test will tell us whether, um, which one it is. So the, the test is we, we measure a hormone called FSH, which is a hormone that drives your ovary, uh, drives, sorry, not your ovary, drives your testicle to produce sperm. Now, if that particular hormone is normal, that means your brain thinks that your testicle is working. So there's more like so more more likely than not that your testicle is working, but the sperm are just not getting out. If that level is very of that hormone is very high, that means your brain is working extra hard to drive the testicle to try and get sperm. And that may be where the problem lies, that you're just not producing sperm. Or it may be that, that hormone's not there at all. And your testicles are just sitting there waiting to produce sperm, but they're not being driven by your brain by that brain hormone. So there's lots and lots of um, of tests we can do before we we need to offer you treatment. It's just getting the right tests at the right time. So at the end of the day, you can say, I've done everything. Okay. Um, what are the chances of getting funding on the NHS if your partner has no sperm at all? Good. Depends where you live. And that's the iniquities of IVF. Um, the postcode lock, lottery, IVF, you've heard me say this so many times before, IVF is very, very high profile. If you want to sell newspapers, talk about fertility, but it's low priority. Um, NHS is strapped for cash and they'll always find reasons where they, they'll reduce the funding for fertility. Um, but generally speaking, if you've got azoospermia, that means no sperm, find out why get the treatment on the NHS if you can. And you find out by asking your local CG what the funding is for fertility. Finally, does the quality of sperm decrease once thawed after being frozen? Not necessarily, not necessarily. Freezing is the future. Freezing eggs, freezing sperm, um, um, thawing, thawing eggs, thawing embryos, thawing sperm is getting better um, as uh, as the years go by and nowadays certainly with frozen embryos the pregnancy rates with frozen embryos that's that's fertilized eggs is every bit as good as fresh ones so never fear if your doctor advises you to freeze embryos and personally I think that's the way um, things are going but that's the um, debate for another day so I think that's about, we've certainly run out of time. I've run a bit over. So my um, my um, colleagues will tell me that um, it's time to shut up, which I will do. If, there are, if I haven't answered your questions tonight, I'm sorry, we've just run out of time. But um, I will, um, we'll get back to you if you want to, if you want to um, uh, email us in. Um, uh, if you want to get more information, We've got clinics all over the country. We've now got what, 21 clinics. We've got a website that's full of information. And if you need more information about anything we've spoken about tonight, male infertility, female infertility, same sex couple uh, fertility issues, or if you just want advice about um, starting or expanding your family, we're here. You just phone us up uh, through our main general, general inquiries management, GEM, or your local clinic, and um, don't sit there and just worry alone. You know, share your problems. That's what we're here for. That's what we do all day long, and we love it. So um, good luck, have a good evening, and I hope to see you um, again soon. Cheerio.